Hey everyone, it's Jonathan, and welcome back to Every Version Ever. We've got a great season ahead of us. I have plenty of beloved stories and films lined up to talk about. But for the first series of the season, for some reason, I decided to go obscure. Last year, while I was planning my Christmas content, I asked Sarah if there was anything she wanted to cover, and she sent me a trailer for a Peter and the Wolf film and asked if it would count as a Christmas episode since there was snow in it. I thought maybe it could, but I was already up to my ears in episodes for December, so we recorded it in case I had time for it, and if not, I would save it to use this year. And I saved it. But as we talked about that one, I got to thinking, I wonder if there are any other versions of the story. Sarah and I had already reviewed Disney's version as part of our episode on Make My Music for my other podcast. If I could find a few more, that could potentially be a series for every version ever. Long story short, I found a bunch more, and now Peter and the Wolf is our premiere series on the podcast. And since the Disney version was already done and ready to go, that's going to be the one to kick off the series. And yes, I realize it's a lot shorter than I usually go for, due to it being one of ten shorts that we covered in that original episode. But to make up for the length, stay tuned because a second episode is coming tomorrow, covering the film that inspired the series. But for now, let's get into probably the most famous version of the story, Walt Disney's Peter and the Wolf. Then we get probably the segment that I am most familiar with because this was taken out of this film and put into a VHS we had when I was a kid, Peter and the Wolf. Which I don't think I grew up watching this at all. I don't know if I watched this once. We, I don't know where we got it because it's not like our parents didn't buy us movies. I think somebody just gave us this tape at some point. It was Peter and the Wolf and some other Disney shorts that were music related. The main one I remember is, like, The Music War. I don't remember what it's called, with the cellos and the, the violins. Or no, tubas and violins fighting. I don't know. That was the, the other big one that I remember from that tape. Mm. Anyway, this is Peter and the Wolf. And this is probably, like, the most famous story that they've used here, too, because Peter and the Wolf is one of those things that I think has been adapted in other versions. I don't know, it's about a kid who wants to go hunting a wolf, and there's a bird and a cat and a duck that go with him. Which, when I looked it up, I was surprised because it was only about 10 years old. Like, I think it might have been actually made in 1936, written in 1936. Mm. So it's not like they were taking a folk tale from the 1700s and adapting it. Maybe somebody was, but... I guess I didn't realize it was that new of a piece. And maybe that's why the tale itself isn't that dark, because if it was old, it would probably be darker. The little <laughs> boy true. probably would have learned his lesson by being eaten mm -hmm. and listen to your grandfather and don't go hunting wolves when you're not prepared. Um, but they actually were fairly true to the story. They left out the part about the boy wanting the wolf to be in a zoo. And the duck does actually die in the story. But they've had the duck live and they didn't explain about the zoo. But the wolf is caught in similar fashion to the story. Mm -hmm. The original story. The narration was done here by Sterling Holloway, which I'm kind of of two minds. Having watched it as a kid and watching it now, I feel like, like I liked it as a kid, so... I like Sterling Holloway here, but thinking about the different pieces here and how this movie could be improved, I think this could be improved by no narration. Really? I think I would like this a lot better if there were no narration at all. That's an interesting perspective. I thought maybe you would want more dramatic narration. I mean, that might help a little, but I still think I would like it with no narration, just the musical instruments, because... It's, it's one of those things, it's like Fantasia, like certain songs, they had like ideas for what the story would be that were played out through the instruments. And this is that, but even more specific, because every character, like they said in their narration, every character is given a specific instrument. And they could have explained that at the beginning, but then just let the story tell itself. Because yeah. really, when I think about it, you don't need a narrator for this. It's mm -hmm. fairly self-explanatory. And a lot of what he says... It sounds like it's for the children who are watching. Like, Perhaps very little children, too. Yeah. Because if you're, I don't know, 
you probably have to be pretty little, like really little, to not get what's happening. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. if you had the grandpa, you know, wagging his finger or something, and the little boy going out anyway, mm -hmm. you know, you can. Part of me kind of wonders if this was originally intended to not have narration because so much of what they're doing is very expressive, like the facial expressions and the wagging of the finger. It's like everything is told through the visuals. So I'm wondering if the narration was kind of an afterthought. I don't, I don't know. know. Jinx. <laughs> um, I, I do want to say a word for the wolves because they made this wolf so ugly and evil looking. It was... <sighs> Yeah, I mean, the birds were wearing hats. I guess I, there's only so much I can throw. But they, but they just exaggerated so much. And in the end, the wolf was powerless. So... Yeah, really. The, the wolf had so many opportunities to eat all of them. And he was just so slow. <laughs> and in real life, he probably would have been ripping that deck apart while the little boy was trying to run off, crying, home... <laughs> You know, if he wasn't eating the boy first, because frankly, the boy had more meat on him, but the duck might have worked. Um, no, this is definitely not an old, old school fairy tale, because the fairy tale would have taught you that little boys do not go hunting wolves. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that is true. They really should have had the grandpa rescue him out of that tree. <laughs> yeah. No, the fact that... I, like, I didn't remember how the, the thing ended, so I was kind of surprised that they had Peter actually win in the end, like, catching the wolf. I, I thought that he was going to have to be rescued by those hunters. Reality is, wolves are sometimes creepy-looking, sometimes beautiful... You know, they can be scabby looking. They can also be majestic, but they're valuable creatures. They're beautiful creatures and they're powerful creatures that need to be respected. So don't take life lessons from Peter and the wolf. <laughs> don't go try and live with wolves, okay? Somebody out there may be getting ideas. Just don't do it. Don't be like those people. <laughs> I'm going to go live with bears, and I'm going to go live with wolves. What could go wrong? We're going to fight for the food. I'm thinking about this one guy who... First, I thought he was actually out living with wolves, but I think he was just getting into an enclosure with them, and people who manage, the wolf, who manage wolves weren't too happy with what he was portraying, but he would, like, bare his teeth and try and get... and be in the pecking order for the food, and I don't know whether he's still living or not. <laughs> He probably is. And he just, he wanted to act like a wolf. And you're just, people who want to get too cuddly with apex predators are asking for trouble. Sometimes it looks cool. And then you hear about somebody getting eaten and that's not so cool anymore. Mm -hmm. So try and rein in your wildlife expectations. You know, work at a zoo or something. Practice <laughs> safety measures. These are lessons not learned from Peter and the Wolf. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but they're, the way they did the house and the, the posts and, you know, with the, the colorful paint. I mean, that was kind of cute and pretty. I don't know what the people of the original region would have to say about it, but <laughs> it, it was pretty. It was cute. Yeah. I guess that's one of my top positives. <laughs> Does it have, like, lasting value to you with the nostalgia factor, or what do you think of it now? I mean, it's fine. <laughs> I, I like it as maybe a little bit of nostalgia, but I see a lot of flaws in it now. Not enough to ruin it, but enough for me to be like, this could have been a little better. Mm. Thanks for listening to this episode of Every Version Ever. If you like what you've heard, make sure to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform or to the Every Version Ever YouTube channel. Make sure to follow my co-hosts as well. Any relevant links will be in the description for easy access. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode. So thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.